With the Carnival Jubilee being the newest ship in Carnival's fleet, there's a lot of hype being built up around the ship. We previously posted an overview of the Carnival Jubilee and had a lot of comments on that video asking if we could do a comprehensive restaurant tour. So today, that's what we're going to be doing because we are here to make your lives easier and we are here to listen to the comments of people who watch our videos. On Carnival's website, they have 32 dining options listed and today in this video, we're going to be going through all 32 dining options as well as showing the menus if they're out there. I categorize myself as someone who likes to cruise smart, so I really like to focus on the included dining options and when it comes to the Carnival Jubilee, the list does not fall short of anyone's expectations. I want to start this video off with the fast casual dining options because there are a few. And first we have Shaq's Big Chicken. This chicken spot was introduced on the Carnival Mardi Gras and has slowly made its way through the Carnival fleet. This restaurant specializes in fried chicken sandwiches fried chicken tenders. They also have grilled chicken if you're trying to have a more healthy alternative, but I have to tell you, the french fries are to die for, and they have an amazing toppings bar to help dress your sandwich that you decide on. Up next, we have the Carnival Cult Classic, Guy's Burgers. This is one of the best burgers that's out at sea. It is a partnership with Guy Fieri, and if you've had it before, you know, you know, they have multiple different options from the ringer, which has barbecue sauce and a fried onion, to just a plain burger with cheese. They also have an amazing toppings bar that has your standard toppings like lettuce and pickles, but goes all the way up to fried onions and mushrooms. It really helps make a delicious burger. Another fan favorite is Blue Iguana Cantina. This is Carnival's take on Chipotle. You can build your own burritos. They're open for breakfast and lunch and their breakfast burritos are really good. You can get hash browns thrown in a burrito. I try to do this at least two or three times on my vacation because it is really filling and it's quick and easy and it tastes really fresh. Up next, which is new to the Excel class, is Street Eats. This is a food truck based facade that has dining options that change daily. The three main carts revolve around some sort of french fries that are loaded, dumplings, and then a grill that has kebabs and other things of that nature. This is open for lunch and dinner. It's an extremely quick option and the food has never missed while I've had it. Open only on sea days for lunch is Guy's Pig and Agar Barbecue, which has some of the best barbecue at sea. However, it is worth noting that this is open every day for dinner and it has a wide variety of stuff. You can either do the a la carte menu or you can pick three different types of meats and sides and do it like that. It's really good. It's totally included in your fare, which is really nice. Not listed on the Carnival website, but is a staple of every Carnival ship, is the Pizza Restaurant. This doesn't have a name yet on the Carnival Jubilee, but on the Mardi Gras, it was just a normal pizza place. On the Celebration, it was Miami inspired, so they did have some Cuban aspects to it. And I expect the Jubilee to be some sort of Texas barbecue theme because it's gonna be stationed out of Galveston. So I can see them having a play on barbecue in the pizza restaurant. Next to the pizza restaurant is a sandwich restaurant, which is just a grab and go as well. They heat up your sandwiches if you decide you want them hot. And on the celebration, it was also Miami themed. So there were some Cuban sandwiches. This, I'm not really sure what they're gonna do. Maybe some pulled pork sandwiches. I'm curious to see what the Jubilee is gonna have in store, but they also do have caprese sandwiches, ham and turkey sandwiches, and some really fun like meatball subs and stuff like that. So I'm curious to see what the Jubilee is gonna have on their menu, but we'll have to wait and see. Now we can talk about our seated dining options that aren't gonna be so quick and casual, like Shebang. Shebang is a Mexican Asian blend, which I personally don't really like for lunch because they just have you build your own bowl. You can choose between a rice bowl for the Mexican side or a noodle bowl for the Asian side. It's okay. I personally would just say skip that and go to Blue Iguana Cantina if you're feeling Mexican. But for dinner, totally different story. They have a Mexican side of the menu and an Asian side of the menu, and you can pick a Mexican appetizer and then an Asian entree. And all of it's been really good. The margaritas there are fantastic. So I definitely recommend checking out Shebang. And of course, this is no additional cost. Another sit down restaurant that I personally love is Cochina del Capitano, which is the Italian restaurant on board. Their dinner is really good. I Highly, highly recommend just getting every appetizer you can there. This is included in your fare and they have the rice balls are absolutely incredible. The meatballs are really good. Every time I am on an Excel class ship that includes Cochina because in the other classes ships, Cochina del Capitano is not free. So take advantage of it when you're on the Jubilee. Of course, we can't talk about free dining and not talk about the main dining room. Here, this is your free option that has seat a brunch where you can get steak and eggs, eggs benedict, all your classic favorite brunch favorites. 
for absolutely free and it's a lot better quality i think personally than the buffet for breakfast so i recommend checking out a sea day brunch if you have a sailing that's one or two sea days definitely try to check out the sea day brunch it's one of my personal favorite fast times you can have a bunch of mimosas really get a good start to your day and of course as the day progresses the main dining room during dinner time is one of my favorite things you sit down get a really good quality meal for no additional cost and the menu changes daily so i'll have the menus for carnival cruises linked in the description below because there's just too many days to go over i'll try to pop up some screens here but we just know the main dining room is one of the best options if you're looking for free good quality food for dinner and you're tired of the buffet food you can definitely do the main dining room. Unfortunately, the next couple of restaurants are gonna all have an additional cost associated with them. However, I do have to say that their food on Carnival is pretty reasonably priced, even though it is an additional cost. Like if you were to go to a hibachi restaurant, you'd probably spend like 50 to $60 a person on land and on board, it's only $30. And with that being said, Bonsai Teppanyaki is the hibachi restaurant on board. This has an amazing atmosphere. The chef keeps the table engaged. All the chefs have a really good personality. And honestly, the food is to die for. I'm a huge fan of hibachi. And honestly, you're not going to get a better tasting hibachi meal, especially for $38 for dinner. Up next, we have Fahrenheit 555. This is the steakhouse on board that specializes in really high quality cuts of beef, as well as some seafood options. And if you're looking for some higher end cocktails, the steakhouse pro tip, has all of the high-end liquor on board and it's pretty much only in that bar. So if you're looking to really maximize a cheers package, if you have the drink package, you should definitely just go to the steakhouse to get a really nice cocktail because they kill it there. And if you're curious about what bars are on the Jubilee, we did a video with all the bars listed. That'll also be linked in the description below if you wanna watch that. If you're a drinker and you wanna know what you're getting yourself into, is it worth getting the cheers package or not? That'll all be answered in that video. Let's keep this train rolling, people. I personally have never dined at this restaurant, but Rudy Seagrill specializes in seafood. Carnival partnered with Chef Rudy, who is a famous restaurant chef, and they serve all your favorite seafood options, like lobster bisque, lobster tail. They go above and beyond, and I have heard the quality is really high. So if you do like seafood, I'd recommend checking out Rudy Seagrill if you're looking to pay a little bit of extra money. Sticking with the seafood options, if you're looking for a fast, casual seafood spot, the Seafood Shack is a spot where you can go get a quick bite to eat. It's located right next to Street Eats and they offer a bunch of things like fried seafood platter, all the way to lobster rolls and buckets of shrimp, clams, crab. So if you really are a seafood lover and you want something during the daytime for lunch or dinner, I highly recommend checking out the Seafood Shack. Emerald's Bistro is a Cajun Creole inspired restaurant partnered with Chef Emeril Lagasse, who is famous for his Creole food. And this is a solid option if you're looking to do small tapas. They have a really cool menu. This dining option is also open for breakfast if you're looking to do a little fancy breakfast. And most of the plates at Emeralds are priced at $6. So it is a pretty affordable option if you're looking to have a little bit of a nicer, nicer dining option, but you're not trying to break the bank. Up next, if you're also looking for small bites, Bonsai Sushi offers some extremely fresh sushi. The restaurant's open for lunch and dinner. And honestly, the way that the Excel ships are built Bonsai Sushi has an amazing glass wall that you can just overlook the ocean when you're dining there. So for a really nice view and some pretty affordable prices, you can have a super nice lunch at Bonsai Sushi and not kill your wallet. This next one, personally, I would never use on vacation because I don't ever want to cook on vacation. However, if you're looking to do an interactive date, this might be for you. Carnival Kitchen is a cooking class on board the Carnival Jubilee and they have its own designated kitchen, so you don't have to go to the galley, and the chefs will show you how to prepare and cook certain meals. And honestly, it seems like it'd be a cute little date idea, but I don't wanna have to do any work on vacation. But if you don't mind, totally try the Carnival Kitchen. If you're looking for a unique dining experience and you're not looking to cook like the Carnival Kitchen, you might wanna try the chef's table. However, there is only room for 14 people and it is offered on a first come first serve basis and I would highly recommend making reservations before you even get on the ship. This is more of a tasting menu that's offered on the ship. You'll be able to meet the executive chef that's on board and he'll be able to walk through appetizers, hors d'oeuvres, cocktails, entrees, and desserts, all while you're seated with this very intimate group of 14 people. And afterwards, you do get to get a tour of the galley. So you get a very overall experience. It is kind of pricey. It is over $100 a person. 
However, it's really high quality food. If you look at the menu, you can see that you're getting some really good stuff included in that $100 fee. So if you have the money, it might be worth looking into. I personally have never done it, but it is something that intrigues me. And if you're lazy, just like me, there are two dining options that are really easy where the food will be delivered to you, which is a really nice feature. On board, they have a pizza delivery service. So you'll be able to pull it up on the app on your phone. You'll be able to order pizza and it'll be able to detect where you are on board and they'll be able to bring the pizza right to you. So if you're sunbathing and you don't want to get up to get food, to lose your chair potentially, you can have pizza delivered right to you, which is really nice. And the other option is room service. Room service on Carnival used to have no fee associated with it. However, nowadays, just like everything, there's money. <laughs> there's a fee associated with it and and the fees only apply to after 10 a.m so you can have continental breakfast delivered to your room for free however anytime after that you will have to pay additional costs the menu is pretty diverse for room service and if you get out of the club and you see that the line for pizza is 30 40 minutes and you don't want to wait in line for that you can just go back to your room order some food they have some really good options like the wings are really good they have chicken tenders, quesadillas. Honestly, it's more of an adult drunk food menu than anything else or whatever, maybe kids. I act like a child when I'm on vacation, sue me. And that pretty much wraps up all of the restaurants on the Carnival of Jubilee, at least according to their website. However, my friend that's a travel agent did send me the ship's deck plans. And there are a few restaurants that aren't included on the website, just like the pizza restaurant and the sandwich restaurant, which I talked about earlier before. So I'm sure that they'll still be releasing some other restaurants because the ship hasn't been fully released yet and there's no passenger sailing on it yet. However, we'll be keeping our ear to the ground and if we hear anything, we'll be making an update in the comments below. So be sure to check out the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've made it this far and you haven't subscribed, please do it. We're trying to hit 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year and hopefully 10,000 subscribers soon after that. We're gonna be doing a crazy giveaway. We hit 1,000 subscribers, we gave away a free cruise. 10,000 subscribers, we're probably gonna go a little crazy if you know what I mean. So be sure to subscribe to be in it to win it. And we'll see you in the next video. Take it easy, peace.